Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everybody is doing well. Happy, happy, happy Easter. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to go ahead and do my pleasantries real fast. We've got a fun little show for you today. I hope you're here and you've got some plans later on uh, with family or with friends. Please let me know if you do. If you've got plans, put a one in chat. I'm going to go ahead and go through. We got Coin Junkie in the house. Coin Junkie, what's going on, brother? Thanks for being in here. Uh, we got Paula Bloom. Hi, Paula. Hi, Eric. How are you two? I hope you're doing well. Thank you all for being here. AZ Coins. Rockzilla is in the house. We got the one and only Jack Gallman. How you doing, bud? Hope Marion, North Carolina is treating you well. We have, let's see, who did I miss? Who did I miss? There's somebody else. I know there's somebody. Uh, maybe not. It doesn't look like my chat is cycling. So let me check and see if it is. What's up, Strider? How you doing, bud? Hope you are doing well. Hope everything is going good for you today. Um, my plan is to do nothing. That's a good thing. All right. So just as a reminder, folks, if for some reason you are seeing this in portrait mode and you want to see it in landscape mode, simply go to the chat. In the chat, there is a pinned link. That pinned link will take you to the other side of YouTube, and it will actually take you to the landscape side. If you don't want to see it landscape mode, if you were on your phone and you want to see it this way, then go ahead and click that link and click on portrait mode. That will take you into the other side, and that way you can see portrait mode. So again, You'll be able to jump back and forth either by watching it in landscape or portrait mode, and those will both be found in the chat. So it doesn't matter which view you want to see. If you want to bounce back and forth, you can do that. You do not have to exit and then come back in the other side. You simply just go to that chat, click on that button, and that will take you to where you need to be. All right. So it looks like we're set up. It looks like everything is going. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, it doesn't look like my landscape side is up. EMR, it's not working. Okay, so hold on. Let me check that out real fast. So this happens from time to time. Green health, why is this not working? Oh, you know what? I may have to... To do to do to do that request. It should be there. Well, if that doesn't work, then I'll just remove that one. Um, we'll see what's going on. These are little growing pains that I have to go through. Got 14 people in here right now. I'm hoping that we can get that to show up. Um, I'm looking at chats. EMR says it's still not working. Hey, go! What's going on? Stacking with crack and Papa York. How you doing? Good day, Sorcerer Stan. Trying to figure out why my other side isn't working. Uh, if it doesn't work, then I will just go through and cancel that one. Um, should be up. Trying to figure out. So this one. It looks like it should be up and running. We should be live. EMR, is it uh, is it working? We should be up. We should be good on the uh, the portrait side now. I think we're there. Let's see if we've got this a little bit better. Okay, let's check that out. So EMR, let me know if that's live. We should be actually live now. Um, for some reason. Chat's here, but no video. Okay, let's check and see if that video is there. Um, it should be. I think what happened was um, I forgot to click on the auto start. So when I clicked on the button, it didn't auto start. But we should be there. So EMR, let me know if that is working. Um, I'm showing the video on this side, so we should be seeing the video. Um, we should be up and running on both sides. So let me know. If not, then we'll just... Uh, I'll just end it. You can, you can come over to the other side. That did it. Okay, outstanding. Yeah, I probably just forgot to turn on the auto start on that particular side. Uh, again, this is something new that I'm doing. Hey, what's going on, David Carlisle? Thanks for being in here. I appreciate you. 
Um, so we are going to try this again. There'll be little hiccups. I'm fine with doing that. I don't mind technical issues when I'm trying something new. I just can't stand technical issues when I have stuff set up and it doesn't work for me. All right. Well, you know what we're going to do? I am going to click over and I'm going to say, hey, brown sugar, how you doing? So I'm going to click over and I'm going to say hi because we have some people in the house and you know these two. They're in here very frequently. And I'd like to say hi to both Eric and Paula. Good morning, you two. How are you? Happy Easter. Uh, they have risen if they are watching chat. Oh, yes. What are your plans for today? I know you got the grandbabies and everything else. You guys got some fun plans. Oh, no, that's no good. Oh, no. <laughs> that is a terrible day. Hey, Flying Dutchman, what's going on? Was oh. gonna, yeah, I didn't do it. <laughs> nope. Yeah, this isn't much. This is like RPM 29 double die number eight for 46S. Nice. And uh, I bought it at the fun show two years ago. And man, I ended, I got it from Brian Rains. And of course you did. He didn't want to get rid of it. He's like, you know, every time you buy something from him, he's like, well, I'm not sure I want to get rid of it. It's like, dude, you got 10,000 coins sitting here in your box. That's you how he get gets away with not else. lowering his prices. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and that's what and that's what he goes, well, how much will you give me? And I told him, and he's like, well, let me think about it for a few. I saw right while I'll come back. When I come back, he says, okay, I need lunch anyways. <laughs> so I, yeah. Obviously, he wanted money for lunch. Yeah. But I still think I paid him 40 bucks for it. Was he actually at his table or did you have to search no, him down at, on the floor? he was at his table. Uh, <laughs> he, did, he didn't have his famous, I'm on the floor, here's my number, text yeah, me. Yeah, he's on the floor getting stuff that he can add to the pile that he doesn't want to sell. Exactly. He's a great guy, though, and he really knows his varieties. He is. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Frostbite, this is your show. Go. <laughs> it's a, the, when you two are here this is just what happens i'm used the to this it's all everybody. good no it's all good no worries uh one thing i do want to do um again everybody does our pleasantries and says hi i'm going to be going over you've probably seen that flash up do you see that on the screen um so you guys in channel and, and the stream yard side will not see this um because i don't think there's a way for me to share that actually there's I'm actually watching the YouTube side. I know. Uh, I probably should switch over to the YouTube side because I can't see anything on StreamYard. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is uh, Nickel Stacking um, asked me to do a little review on uh, military currency. Now, I'll be very clear. We have people in the community who are really, really good when it comes to currency. I am not one of them. Uh, but I will always do due diligence and try to find out as much as I can regarding military currency or uh, a coin or whatever it might be. Um, but I'll give you some of the basics. And then if you want to know more, you want a more in-depth understanding or you want very specific answers to your questions, I'll always refer you to the people who we consider the, the experts or the more knowledgeable of the group. Um, and that's going to be, you know, most likely it's going to be sending you to live current Q&A um, if you're talking about sense, obviously I'm going to be sending you to Eric and Chuck. Um, but for this particular one, there's a couple people that I have in mind. So if you want more than what I'm going to give you, then let me know and we'll make. So military currency, uh, kind of looking at the start, uh, the start of military currency was around World War. II. And one of the primary issues with doing the military currency, uh, came from, not necessarily necessity, 
uh, but it came out of protection of the U.S. economy and our currency. You see, what would happen is we would send people overseas and they would buy utilizing the dollar in the local economies. And sometimes the local economies would be crap. And so they just wouldn't be very good. And so what we would have to do is we would have to identify and try to locate um, monies later on. And if not, then because the, the conversion rate from the local economy to our money, um, if the economy was bad, would end up with basically all this worthless money because they would want to keep our money because it was more valuable. And then what they would do is in turn, they would exchange it for their, their money and end up making more and more and more. And so the U S government decided we're not going to do that. We're going to stop doing that. And so they started creating uh, what they call scripts. Now scripts are something that if you've ever watched the TV show mash, you've heard them talk about military scripts and essentially all a military script was is paper money utilized for temporary use. Now, this wasn't a permanent thing. Uh, again, they only ran from 1946 to 1973, uh, thereabouts. And again, it was just one of those things that was designed uh, to make sure that you didn't have uh, a lot of U.S. money, a lot of U.S. currency staying in those foreign countries. One of the secondary benefits of this was if there was ever something wrong in that country and we needed to get out of there quick, um, maybe they were taking over, talking about Korea during uh, the Korean War, things of that nature. They could quickly stop those um, military payment certificates, that MPC, or, uh, and basically demonetize it. Uh, so there's some really cool things regarding this. Now, one thing that you used to see in MASH that always made me laugh because it's it's actually not true um, was that they would do gambling, right? And then they would roll the die and do stuff like that and they would get the money and stuff like that and then they would go cash it in. They couldn't do that. So actually what the federal government did is they implemented something that you could not change in. You could not cash in more than you made. And so what they did is they implemented uh, something around the 1950s, 1960s Vietnam time frame. I think it was, or not, no, 19, I think late 1960s, uh, like the start of the Vietnam era, because what people were doing is their buddies would get shot. They would take their money. They would bundle it up and send it home, have their parents trade it in. And they said, no, we're not going to do this anymore. Um, because they were, people were, trying to change in two, three, four times their income. And they were concerned about there being nefarious acts occurring so that people could get other people's money. So they stopped doing that. Um, just a cool little tidbit. I thought it was a lot of fun. Now on the screen, you're seeing a couple different things. So if you see my mouse, you'll see that I'm showing one here. And if you look right down here, you'll see something that says series 481. Or if you come over here and you look at this particular one here, you may see 461. Or you come down here and you'll see uh, series 701 or series 681. Each series uh, was ran for a certain time frame. And some of these were done depending upon where they were utilized and what was going on during that time frame. For instance, the 461, the one up here that you see just in the upper corner of the screen, that was the very first uh, note that was issued. And that was actually issued in 1946. This was issued during World War II. And you would find these things in the EU countries. You would find these things in like Austria, Belgium, England, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary. And this is where you would you'd find these bills. Now, you could find them in some Asia Pacific areas like the Philippines but you would only find them in like maybe in Hawaii, but most likely in those areas where we were just now setting up areas uh, of protection in uh, and around, you know, Midway and, and the Philippines and things of that nature. Also 471, you see the 471 in here somewhere. Uh, maybe I think this is the 471. I can't remember which one. Um, that was also utilized this, and these were utilized between 1948-1951, um, and then you would see different series. Uh, this one right here, 
the one that's the red one. It's, you kind of see this. You might not see this on the um, on the portrait mode. You'll only see this on the other side. Again, if you guys haven't already done so, hit that thumbs up. If you're brand new to the channel, this is something that's interesting to you. Make sure you're subscribing. Um, here on the on the lower side, if you see this one right here, you'll see that this is 481. So series 481. Again, we're looking at the same thing. This is European note um, or European script. Uh, and this one was uh, between 1951 and 1954. So as you look through some of the different ones, the 681 over here, this was one of those that was done primarily in Vietnam. So you see the one over here with the little gentleman. Looks like he's holding something. This was a Vietnamese note um, specifically to Vietnam. It wasn't located anywhere else, uh, lo located specifically in that area. Uh, now, in the description of this video, I have included the link. So if you're interested in looking at this particular thing, this article that I'm looking at, this article that I'm referencing to you, came from the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. And for those of you that don't know, you have coins that happen at the Mint, and then you have the Bureau of Engraving and Printing that does the currency. So this article that talks about the history and where they were at and how they were designed the denominations of things like the five cent, 10, 25, 50, $1, $5, $10, and $20 notes, right? So then they talked about the numbers and where they were done and how they were taken care of. Again, if you want to find out more about this, reach out to me, let me know. You can go to the about me of my page, find my email, send me an email, ask me any questions that you want to, and we can make sure we get that to you. All right, I told you it was gonna be pretty quick because again, I am not the person in charge when it comes to these kind of things. You do not want me doing, uh, <laughs> discussing more than that. So, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, thanks Paul. I appreciate you throwing that in there. Um, but it's a great article, it's a great read if you wanna find out more about that. Uh, yeah, actually on Big Flip's channel yesterday, a uh, big flip um, sold a a binder. Unfortunately, I didn't see it. I'd have been all over it. Um, sold a binder full of um, military scripts. Quite a cool item. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, I didn't get to see it. Uh, but when you flipped it through, it was page after page after page after page after page um, from Korea and Vietnam and Cambodia and Laos and all of that stuff. Hey, what's going on, me? Good to see you, bud. I know you were in the uh, vert side. If you want to be over in this, the other side, you can go ahead and click on that uh, link there pinned in chat. Again, if you're new to the channel, please do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe. And we can do that. All right, folks. What do you guys, do you guys have anything you guys want to talk about today? You guys have any That article news? I put up was from the ANA. Um, it was just a presentation done about military payment certificates, and it's um, really interesting. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not into currency, but of course, when something pops up that somebody's going to talk about, I need to read a little bit about it. <laughs> so yeah. I don't sound completely stupid, but uh, yeah, it was really interesting, the history about them. So. Hey, what's going on, Mickey Fur? How you doing, bud? Good to see you. I normally see him in Copper Coins. Yep. Like, I know that name. Copper Coins. Ken was talking about Chuck yesterday. Oh, good. He well, finds well. favor in him. He does. They Actually, I've every time him Chuck's Brian, been here, yeah. they seem to call and talk to each other. So. Oh, my gosh. It's Yeah, listen, if, if, if you ever have something to do and he calls you, don't answer the phone. <laughs> That that yeah I've heard. I've I heard took that. him shopping with me yesterday. We were at the soft <laughs> the baseball field. <laughs> yeah, all my real conversations with him have been like via messenger and stuff like that. Oh, I love him. To one. So and funny, that was right? when he donated stuff for the hurricane relief. Oh, nice. So yeah, he's a great guy. He can talk. You think I? You guys think I talk? I talk a lot. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh no you um, definitely yeah he's definitely a, a talker that's true hey what's going on I'm kevin how you doing bud? i'm seriously considering about becoming a state state rep for koneka uh i murder thank well, you thank you for the sub i appreciate you thank you very much considering that is washington have one oregon oregon 
We do, but he said that several of the states have several. And yeah. that well, this, rep, like this rep is not real active, like at the shows and stuff like that. Yeah. So that would be fun. Be yeah, a it lot seems of fun. Like they're making a little bit of a comeback. They were having issues for a while, and they need to make a comeback. That's the whole deal. Yeah. Who's that? If you guys are not members of Koneka and you oh, could, and yeah. you like errors and varieties, please. Yeah, I think it's consider 16 joining. bucks, isn't it? It's not yeah, expensive. It's cheap. Please consider joining. That's sixty bucks annually, right? No, I, I think it's. Let me see. I think it's like sixteen. Yeah, oh, it's not sixteen. You can get a mail it's sixty. Like sixty and is pretty get, pricey for some people. Six issues a year of error scope, which in in itself is worth the money. I mean, it's so if you guys don't know, so there are people that are on that don't know what Kineka is. Uh I'm gonna Kine throw them a link. Yeah. Uh Kinec is one of these things that is uh, I Paula, you probably can explain it than me. Just a, a massively good resource for looking at coins and issues varieties dates um it's a great resource i mean we, there's a lot of good resources out there well so if you 25 bucks a year if you've um they're separate now but if you've ever gone and utilized variety vista you have utilized a lot of their work um wiles is not with them anymore but right. um for reasons but, hey, Mickey um, Fur just gave me a dollar ninety nine super chat, but that is Mickey First's first super oh, chat. Oh yay! Thank, Thank you, guys. Mickey. I appreciate you, bud. That's awesome. Thanks so much. I, I they, do um, appreciate. Yeah, that. they do. I think he said they have four, Kevin. I think he said they have four reps in in Michigan. But um, whenever we we whenever somebody sends us a coin that we think might be a new discovery. Um, that's typically where we will send you to get it. Um, if it's a variety attributed or an error to get it examined to, you know, verify that it's authentic. And uh, yeah, the issue that they're having right now is getting it done. They are having a big issue getting it done because they just don't have the people with motivation to get it done. Yeah. And it, it's tough. I mean, that's why most of the, the uh, variety attributions are all closed down is because people don't understand they think oh i sent six coins that can't take long yeah. six coins could take you know three days if it's properly investigated yeah uh because you you want to do your best not to attribute things twice and get in line Th that's you know right. i mean you there they've got not only do they have the gen, you know, genuine stuff that they're looking at, but they get every parking lot coin you can imagine. That, that's right. <laughs> and I do like so, the forum thing where there's people saying, uh, yes. this, this is not good, you know, or we'll look into it or we'll see the, the last time I looked, I saw, we'll send you an email when we have a spot for you to send it into. Mm -hmm. And you look at some of the posts and they've been there six months and they're still waiting for their, to get their coin looked at. But, I'm not I'm not judging them because I can tell you as somebody who attributes coins that I it got out of hand here and I only I don't want any more than 10 coins on my And desk. Eric, you know as well as anybody that if that particular date and mint mark has a lot of varieties already, yes. You've got to search through every single known variety to make sure it's not an already known variety. That's right. And then you start doing overlays. Or give then them you... and tell them which one it is if it is one. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Then you, like I said, then you're then you're doing overlays. Then you're doing a whole lot and it's a lot of physical work. It is a lot of work. Yeah. Uh for seven dollars or ten dollars. For nothing. I haven't charged anybody a dime. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh <clears throat> I probably should, but then you almost have to open up attributions and then I'll have, I'll be ears deep in packages. Yep. And that's what I don't want. Like I say, I, I try to limit it to one or two packages. And when I'm done with that, I've got already got people in line waiting to send me packages. People that want the information. Maybe if I'm like, so, that's exactly right, Kevin. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And I well, mean, it is, is it is definitely a club that needs to stay around. So 
Oh, yeah, but Look you know, that. the membership has went up. They had to substantially over the last two years. They had to. Yeah. Because they, I mean, they're, they're doing the same amount of work and not getting the memberships, you know? Well, I mean, I can say I rejoined. I was a member for years. Then I stopped because it really wasn't a benefit to me. Right. Uh, and then I asked a couple people through the years, you know, should I rejoin? And uh, consensus was always no. But then about three years ago, uh, I, I brought it up again and they were like, yeah, probably, you know, it's still this, but they're, they're headed in the right direction. They so I rejoined. I actually just rejoined probably six months ago. So. Yeah, they are. They, you know, and the database has taken them a long time. And it's, well, they had a bunch of stuff up, and now all of a sudden I can't find it. So I think they took it down. They did take it down. Um, and I think that is because they're probably paying for bandwidth for their service servers, and it costs a lot of money to have people travel through that. The tracking number, however, I did misspell your last name on the package. That's okay, crack. And everybody, everybody either says my last name wrong. Or they spell it wrong. It's okay. Uh, Blum. Blum, Blum. Yeah, Blum. Blum. <laughs> yeah, welcome to my world. Hey, what's going on, Kraken? How you doing, bud? Good to see you, bud. My whole life, everybody pronounces my last name wrong. Um, Yeah, I just, I, it's, it's, you know, I Thank buy you. coins from Eric, so. It, 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 but it looks like the aspirin. That's why I think people confuse well, it. And, and the weird thing is, is I'm distance, distantly related. It's more of a, a phonetic thing than it is wrong or right. That's why I yeah. never say anything when people call me bear. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. In the sense. late 1800s, when the families started immigrating to America, one took an E and one took an A. Morning, Chris G. Yeah, oh, there's a, uh, but you are, you are a giant teddy bear. So people don't know this, he's. How tall are you? Six five, six six. Six six, yeah. Yep. And I used to be mammothly huge. Now I'm just huge. <laughs> I, used to, I used to be like three hundred and eighty pounds, and uh, now I'm only about two hundred and eighty pounds. Very cool. Well, for those of you that are here the first time, again, if you're looking on the stream yard, or if you're looking at the uh, landscape mode, and you want to see it in portrait mode. You can simply go to the chat. In chat, you'll see a pin message. That pin message will allow you to shift back and forth between. So if you're on a computer or you're watching this on an Apple TV and you're in that narrow mode, I know that's absolutely annoying to some people. So just go into the chat, click that link, and it will take you to the other mode. So you can go back and forth. You don't have to get out and then try to find the other one to come in. You can just simply navigate to that chat and come on that way. So you you decide which one you want to be in, whatever works best for you. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I provide you guys uh, multiple views. I know some people like to look at it on their phones. Some people like to look at it on their uh, their other side. Right now, I don't you have a what? lot of people in the vertical mode, but we don't you know always what see all those for, people for the doing it. The, I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna point out the bad of because that's how I am. Shame on me. People, so I don't see, I don't get to see the people that are in the other stream. I don't get to see their chat. So I don't get to interact um, with them. Do, if, you're in the, me. if you're in the uh, Frosty's chit chat on YouTube page, you oh, will the see the phone chat going through the side, and then you'll see the live chat on the other chat. Say that one more time. On the stream yard, you mean? No, on, on the YouTube. I'm seeing different chat on Frosty's stream. Hey, Neil, hi. Right. How are you doing? Good to see I you. I am on the actual live chat next to the stream. Oh, so you I'm mean on his I'm screen? On his screen. On I gotcha. Yeah, I wasn't watching the YouTube stream. Yeah. That's why. But. but I wanna... Yeah, no, I gotcha. I. Yeah, so there's there's some things about doing this, but again, it depends. It depends on what's going on. If there are if there are general chit chat questions, then I'm what I'm hoping for is that people put you know stuff in both sides, and we can go back and forth and ask questions. Yeah. You know, if we're going to be talking about, so you know, Kevin made the comment that uh, utilizing people or, or or utilizing that 
you know, there's some people that will do a little bit of work, but the research is easy to actually get down and dirty. Like we'll say those comments. We'll, we'll bring those things up if they're major key points. The general chit chats happen in their own. The, the world, the dynamic on each side of these streams has their own different style of chat. So what people might be putting in on the vertical side might be different than what people want to talk about on the horizontal side. So right. I, I can try to blend them, um, but then the chat would be very difficult to do. Um, so I want to try to keep them in their own environments. Again, make it conducive. Now, as as a host or as a co-host, it's very difficult to manage. Um, so it's a little bit harder for the panel members to kind of see what's going on unless you have screen. This is why I said it's it's more work this way, but I'm doing it more for the end user. So whatever the end user works, because ultimately what I'm here for is to provide you guys the best service that I can. I don't care if it's a little bit more work for me. I don't care if it's a little bit more difficult. If it provides something that the end user is interested in, I'm doing it. And so, because I I want, if you want to watch my channel, I want to make sure that I'm giving you what works for you. Right. I want you to thumbs up. I want you to subscribe. I want you to be a part of that. If you're interested in, in membership or gifting memberships or doing stuff like that, I want you to feel like that's of value. So I want to provide you as many opportunities as I can to do that. Screen if that check. means <clears throat> say again. Oh, I'm just sorry. I was reading underneath my breath. Kevin's. Comment. Oh, I got you. <clears throat> I think the screen chat is broken. We're only seeing the night button notes. Um, maybe. I don't know. It was working before, and I was seeing different chat than I was seeing on my live chat. So I, I was just assuming that I was seeing cell phone chat on one side. And Yeah, so oh, if, we have, if we have anybody in the, uh, on the other side, put stuff in chat. On, so if you're in the, in the vertical mode, put stuff in chat. Let's see if they can do that. A lot of people won't chat in the vertical mode because they just watch. Uh, YouTube doesn't make the chatting feature in the vertical mode act really either. easy. So if you're on that side, you may not be seeing a lot of chats because there may not be a lot of chatting going on. But on the portrait side, which is where most of the subscribers and the viewers are, that's where more chat's going on. So if you're more interested in seeing the chat, it's probably going to be on that side. Uh, but if you're more just watching the content, kind of seeing what's going on, then yeah, so that's so what you're seeing on the vertical side. Okay, yeah. So what I've got to do, and this is something that I've got to work on. The primary chat for this right now is the vertical side. So this is something that I need to work on. So this is thank you for pointing this out. Because I'll need to make sure that the chat that I'm utilizing is tied specifically to the landscape chat. Um because you should be able to see, if you're looking at the widescreen mode, you'll see what's here, but the stuff that you're seeing on screen is the stuff that's happening in the vertical mode, right? Which you're not gonna see a lot of chat in that area. The other side is going to be where you actually see the chat, like if you're on a computer on your TV, the window on the side, that's, that's the mode that you're gonna see if you're actually chatting. So- I just saw David Carlisle's thing pop up yeah yeah because he's he's now in the vertical mode and he's he's putting in just so general that's the only chat that's working on screen then that's what i just said yeah and oh. so because if you're in your vertical mode you can see what's happening in the other one right but what i've got to figure out is i've got to figure out how to make sure that the landscape mode is the one that's <laughs> matt he said it's my fits i'm sure it's paula's fault <laughs> what is that Mad T just put in chat. Oh. He said, "I'm sure it's Paula's fault." No, these are just these are just growing pains. And again, as I try to as I try to grow the channel and try to provide you guys a better experience, there's going to be these little things that I don't I, I don't see right off the bat because I can't I can't challenge chat in in setting up unless I'm live, right? So these are know, things man. that I, have I just to want identify. to hear you talk and talk about coins. That's all. I just want to hear that. Can you help me? Um, what do you need, Dr. Idiot? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot. Yeah, well, you just need to tell me what you uh, what you want to know. If you have a question regarding coins and currency, maybe if uh, you, on the you need something else, let me know. Vertical screen. It's on the other uh, side. Just let me know. What do you, what do you got? 
Hashtag you know, ask questions. More. That's what Sunday is about. Sunday is general uh, ringmaster rays on like hashtag blame Paula. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So uh, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, see your physician. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. So have a have a good one. It just <laughs> Eric, that's okay. Stop I don't encouraging mind. him. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a, a physician who said, uh, you know, they needed to put some change in their diet. So Paula's niece uh, <laughs> wallowed took some coins. So, so yeah, took it literally. And I don't mind these people. You don't have to block them, David. I really don't. Uh, they want to be a troll. It's not, it's, as long as they're not slandering people, as long as they're not doing things like uh racial things or if they're not you know blastering no, this uh, one's gonna this one's like gonna this one's gonna be a if it if it gets out of hand then we'll remove them a but child just general chit chat whatever that's fine I, you know uh let people do what they want to do i don't mind um really because it's like if you want to you want to you want to engage in that kind of conversation go ahead as long as it doesn't get out of hand we go off the rails all the time right um, this is something that, uh, that we do on many channels, right? We go off the rails. We talk about things that are mildly inappropriate all the time. So if you want to come out and be goofy and silly and be dumb, this could be a, you know, 10 year old kid for all I know, you know, just wanting to talk potty humor. That's fine. That's okay. As long as it's not ignorant or rude. If you start belittering or belligering my, my people and you start being ignorant and mean or you start throwing racial tendencies or anti-semitic stuff then you're giving yeah. them ideas yeah <laughs> well no I, but here's the thing here's the thing if i don't say it people don't know and i don't i don't care you want to come in and you want to be funny and you want to laugh ringmaster ray is great with potty humor okay he's he's great with it. he has a lot of goofy dad jokes i don't mind that i really don't i just don't want to see anti-semitic stuff i don't want to see racial stuff i don't want to see religious stuff um because it's just not one of the things sd bullion so sd bullion dr idiot is actually a bullion company who does uh they sell bullion they sell coins they're pretty reputable um i we have wait uh, who is sd bullion oh i thought you said dr idiot was no okay, i'm like wait a minute yeah so again um it's just one of those things. So if you want to, if you have questions like that, absolutely. We'll go ahead and do that. I will Thanks accept the, the banter and stuff like that. that. I've got no issue with that. Really. I don't. Um, if you want to be, you want to be a troll and you want to do stuff like that and you want to laugh. Fine. Go ahead. Be a troll. Have fun. Do that. But just make sure you follow my rules. Do I do only coins? I don't have time for them. And that's yeah, but that's fine. But this is my story. What are you so. talking about, Paula? You got all the time in the and day. You, Look at and Facebook. you, you, you go, you go off squirrel and stuff all the time I too. Do. So, um, I do, do I only do coins? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. But my primary thing is coins and collectibles. So what I do in this particular channel is mainly coins. Right? I'm not a currency folk. I don't know currency. I've only been doing this for. God, what a year and three months, a year and four months, not very long. Is there um, anything but coins? Nope. But I I do things like I collect ships and I have artwork and I'm interested in a whole bunch of other stuff. I know. So if you have questions, have a good day, then Kevin. let me know. Say again. I just said telling Kevin to have a good day. He's taking off. Oh, you're taking I off? Know. Easter brunch. Yum. All right. Yeah, everybody, I know you're going to be in and out. Easter's one of those things that, you know, a family <laughs> always comes first. Um, yeah, a hardcore copper. That's exactly right. I don't mind you guys going off the deep end. I don't have fun. Right. And this, this stream, I don't mind if you guys do that. Just keep it decent. Right. Uh, decent I, I don't want any of the slander stuff. I just don't, don't, don't do that. Right. It, it takes a lot to kind of push me to that end. Um, now what I will do is if you start coming in with names that are too much, it's just not going to happen. Okay. I just won't do that. Um, but again, Dr. Yeah. Idiot playing around, being a fool, it's in his name or her name, whatever that might be. Not a big deal. It's all good. My wife's boyfriend. Okay. Yeah. So see, <laughs> again, little stupid humor, right? You got to catch these little fun. I, I think that's hilarious. So go ahead and do that. It's fun. It's just banter. Uh, I don't mind that. 
Now, if anybody in chat <clears throat> has a problem with it, just speak up. Say, hey, you know what? That's a little bit excessive. <clears throat> we are all almost all adults here. Well, speak just act yourself. like it. Just act like it. Monitor yourself, right? Um, <clears throat> what I don't want people to do is I don't want people to get on a power trip. My mods know this. I don't want people getting on a power trip and, and shutting people down and banning and blocking people. If I have a problem with that, I'll remove you. Easy. Um, I get to make the decision of what happens in my channel. So if you want to play and you want to have fun, you play and you have fun. Not a big deal. You be disrespectful, you break my rules, then we're, you're done. Okay? But have fun, right? I do this all the time. I tell stupid potty humor. So go ahead. Now, Dr. Idiot's comment is my wife's boyfriend has a great coin collection. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> but anyway, hilarious. so keep it up again. It's, it is what it is. My video game name, uh, usually I change it. So I murder uh, just subscribed, brand new to this channel. What do you do, I murder? Um, one thing that you guys can do, if you, if you do this, it should work, which is I'm going to put this in both sides of chat. I believe it's going to work. Um, I allow people to do this. If you can do exclamation point, find me. Um, it tells you a little bit about your channel. You can actually say who you are and what you do. Um, go ahead and do that, right? Um, just do me a favor. If you're going to promote yourself, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button and make sure that you're doing the channel. Also, the other thing that you'll see on here. Yeah, but you know what? I, I Again, folks, I want to keep it on the up and up. I want to keep it clean, right? To a degree. <laughs> I don't mind going off the rail, but if you have dry and stupid humor and you want to do that, just keep it. Just, just keep it. You know, there, there's a border. We know that. Military currency. Yes, we talked military currency right at the beginning of the stream. Uh, Reem Worm Ray is a menace. Okay, I wish I could pin his comment. Kraken knows Ray very well. Um, don't you agree, Paula? Yes. <laughs> No, I don't know. Raise a <laughs> raise a menace <laughs> in a good way. Yeah. Oh no, he's he's fun. Yeah. So it's all good. I don't. Yeah. Know. Exactly, Siren. No. Just be kind. No. That's the big one. I kind of like right? it. Yeah. And I don't. Again, I don't <laughs> mind. You get too much, I'll warn you. Uh, my moderators do a pretty good job about watching that. Yeah. Timeout is good. <clears throat> so but you know again just just keep it on the up and up we don't need to belittle that anymore <clears throat> excuse me but again do me a favor make sure you're hitting that subscribe button uh, one thing that you'll see either above me or down over in the corner over there is i'm on my road to 2k i'm only three subs away from 1700 subs my goal is 2k by the first of may okay so i am really going to work hard in the month of april now can i do it We'll see. Um, okay, by the first of May, you could make a little thumbnail about that. I will be. Yeah, I've got some stuff up there because it's a it's a catchy little slogan. Um, I am. I'm 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 not too far away. Three hundred and three subs in a month with a lot of work. I think I can do that. Uh, excuse me, um, but it's going to take you guys being on board with it. So if this is something you guys want to help me do, let me know and we'll. We'll, we'll get there because <clears throat> I really am. I really want to grow this channel. Um, I murder says I have some 1941 check coins minted under occupation, not worth a lot, but I like them. Um, Amanda from live coin Q and a is she, she's your, your, your guys resident, uh, world coin world coin person, right? Yeah, she really likes world coins. A lot, there are a lot of world, super cool world There's, coins yeah. that are not worth anything. I mean, really super cool. Even these military payment things, they, they yeah, don't they're interesting. Them. Yeah, they're interesting, and I mean, they're most of them are are really affordable. So, yeah, and it, the the thing that I like about currency is the artwork, right? I really like the artwork of of some of the currency that's there. It's uh -huh. very, there, there are some of them, especially like the, <clears throat> goodness gracious, especially like the old world notes, like that black Eagle note, right? 
man, some of those are just amazing pieces of art. Yeah. They're absolutely fabulous. Um, and I love looking at some of those, but just like with some of those old collector coins, man, they get pricey fast. Some of those notes are just like, wow. Crazy. What do you got showing on your screen there, Eric? Yeah, there's it is cool stuff a out there and old PCI slab that from the I'm trying to think the series name. Uh, but it had like seven uh numisticists or numisticists. I think Ben <laughs> Potter has has the uh -huh. language is hard. Uh, <laughs> yes, that that language is for me. Like I said, uh, nomenclature isn't my my specialty. No, that's okay. Um, it's a double die obverse at plus RPM, so it's double die number eight RPM twenty nine in nineteen forty six S. Very cool. And it's autographed by J.T. Stanton. He's the one who graded it and attributed it. That's very cool. Just thought I'd put something different up than the the typical stuff I always put up. And J.T. Stanton, he works for NGC. Uh, PC. J.T. No, Stanton, he, cherry, pickers cherry pickers guide. Cherry pickers guide. Got Beavis you. Stanton. Yeah. Your mm -hmm. FS numbers. I don't know yeah, who that is. I don't know the names. FS. Your FS numbers, Fiva Stanton. That's what. That's where the Stanton comes from. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't know that. Yes, I did not know that. So you learned something here if you didn't know that already. He has passed away. Yeah, he's. I think about what 10, 12 Three, years ago. Hey. Was it that long ago? I thought I think it, was it was more like, like two thousand twelve. Like, oh my gosh! What that long ago? Gosh Garnet's in the house. What's up? Gosh Garnet is with uh, a new no, 2018. Event. You're right. Yeah, I didn't think it was that long ago. Gosh Garnet, like do that. me a favor. Go, put in uh, exclamation point and find me. Throw your uh, channel link up there and let's... Uh, I did that for the first time. Put your link up there. We'll uh, we'll put the, uh, the Mint's information in chat. So good to see you in here, bud. Yeah, I hope to be adding some nonsense. 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 I like that. Yeah. Nonsense content. <laughs> That's really cool. Crossblight, I found a new silver certificate, 57 series. Serial number is W. Well, that's a really low number. 00008128. That is a low number. That's a low number. Recording a video at noon. Outstanding. Well, make sure that you uh, put your, your channel link in there. and We'll get over and uh, send people over to your Mint. I'm trying to remember the name of your Mint. Oh, my God. I just went blank. Put that in there in chat, please. Gosh, Garnet. I just went blank. I know it starts with an I. <clears throat> um, What's up, Begotten Solitude? How you doing? Good to see you, bud. Thanks for coming in. And again, folks, if you haven't already done so, please smash that like. If you're new to the channel, um, hit that, oops, hit that uh, subscribe button. I only need three more to 1,700. You guys can get me. Come on, let's do this. All right. <clears throat> they want to see my yodeling pickle. I know what it is. I need to go get some more coffee. I'll be right back. Yeah, no worries. She's, now she talks about her yodeling pickle and then leaves. I love my yodeling pickle. <laughs> Everybody's like, wait, hold on. Are you going to pull out your two Here, buttons my too? And pickle and she's gone. <laughs> uh, have you seen that, Eric? Did you see her, yodel, her yodeling pickle? Oh, yes. <laughs> Just, uh, people are coming in. Local silver mint. There you go. I knew it was something like that. Yeah, you guys got some pretty cool stuff coming out. Um, these guys, uh, if you are a stacker or you like collectible silver, uh local silver mints doing some pretty cool things to to kind of promote uh if we have a sh uh ef event uh they have like 10 ounce rolls of little coins that are really cool uh you have to go check them out they got some cool I, stuff out there that's stuff i would like but i have bought more collectible silver and gold this year than i have since 2004 I think I'm I'm to blame for some of that. You are because I was <laughs> going to say four of them are are spaceship 
rounds. Yeah, I'm probably to blame for a little bit of that. But yeah. again, I think I was on the wrong channel. Uh, you might have been on the wrong uh, wrong site. Again, if you want to change from the portrait to the landscape mode in chat uh, pinned at the top, you can go click on that link and it'll take you either to landscape or portrait mode. So if you want to bounce back and forth, you can do that. If you're on your phone or you're sitting on a computer, you want to be in landscape, then make sure you click on that. Oh, there it is. Uh, the yodel and pickle. <laughs> go ahead, okay. play it, Paula. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, is that beautifully stupid or what? How's your desk so organized? You know, it just. You were talking about this the other day. Who in the world came up with a yodeling pickle? Like I don't know, but I love who, it. Who thought yeah, the yodeling well, pickle was the good, good was the good thing to do? That's just it's funny. Oh, I have seen yeah. some of these names on whatnot. Oh yeah, you're gonna see a lot of these folks on whatnot. Um <clears throat> who who's whatnot channels are you on? Because I know we have a bunch of different people. We have um be picky, be picky. Say again? <laughs> be, yeah. I said what, be picky. Um, it's become very there's a lot of crap on whatnot. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and you'll hear me say this every time I'm on. <laughs> Buy from trusted sources. So try to find people that are good within what you do and um good within what they do, excuse me. Uh, but make sure that they're reliable. And if you ever have any questions about somebody or, you know, hey, I'm looking at doing this, you know, ask, right? Ask the questions. We got a lot of people who are interested in looking up things uh, and trying to find out if something's good or not. If you have the opportunity to buy something and you, you know, you've got a little bit of time, take good quality photos of it. Um, see if they'll let you do that. Send it to send it to us. We'll get it looked at. That's the only downfall of whatnot. Is that the auctions go so fast? You just don't, don't have, have time. Don't really have time to look things up. That yep. that's the only downfall. You really need to go into whatnot, like in most know sellers. What you're looking for and don't do know. it right. Like like uh, coins and ghouls. He does it good because you can go to look at his list two days before. Mm -hmm. and he's actually got the coins. Yeah. Most of the auctions you see, it'll just say auction one through four hundred, and the guy's just throwing stuff up randomly. Yeah, because he doesn't want to do the, the the clerical work. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, again you got to be very careful with yet whatnot. Um, at least on eBay, you get photos. Now the photos may not be very good, but you can always request them. But whatnot is it it's is hopping. Quick. And I like that, but you know, I mean, I don't, I don't really go in there and buy anything that I need to really look up unless like Eric said, I can go into somebody's stream and look it up ahead of time. But yeah. And the other thing with whatnot is you've got to be very careful that you're paying attention because you can get light happy. You can hit the button and all of a sudden it raises $15. Yeah. yeah. And what you were thinking you were bidding $10 for now you're at 43. So <laughs> be very careful. I've spent a lot of money on stuff. I didn't really want like that. Um, like I had a budget of what I would spend on that and I, I blew it um, because somebody clicked it at, you know, 35 or $40. And then, you know, the very last thing I do is shoots up. The other thing with whatnot, and I don't know if they've fixed this, but it drives me crazy is actually, you know what? I'm not even going to say it because I don't want to give people ideas. So never mind. Take that back. Yeah. Take that back. Never mind. Ignore, <laughs> ignore the man behind the curtain. Uh, <clears throat> so Kraken, there are some places. Um, Go Ducky was one. Uh, they're on eBay, and I, when I first started, I was like, I want to see if they're any good. Um, and I picked up two different bags. I picked up a hundred dollar one, and I picked up a two hundred dollar one. And I opened them, and then I took the information from, um. From, I took the uh, the packages and took everything and I took it to a coin shop and I said, you know, what were the potential values of everything? And I have bought other mystery bags and I didn't get what I was hoping for. Um, but I bought mystery bags from Big Flip 
and I've gotten more money than what was anticipated or I'm pretty much right on spot. So you can find good mystery bags. You can find people who are reliable and put those together. They're, were, they're good and fair. So there are places you can do it. But again, you have to know your source. You have to know where you're going. You have to know who you're working with. You have to know what the integrity level of that person is. And just because they look authentic, I just put out a short last night around midnight where looking at this goofy article from, I'm not going to say the channel out loud. You can look at the short. Tell me I will. <laughs> well, it's a certain TV channel, coin channel. Oh. Um, and and the, the Instagram post said, we came across a small hoard of an American treasure. This, right. this, now, this is what got me. Okay. This, like, I was like, are you freaking kidding me? It said this small hoard of 1943 copper pennies. Right. Right. And this is like a coin collection channel, right? So it's like, and the, the image that they showed was like 35 or 40 pennies. It's like the total N of 1943s everywhere is 40. <laughs> is there that many? Uh, no. yeah, according, according to PCGS or something, I think the, the total population of known investors is 40. Oh, yeah. So that means PC, that means 20 of them are in PCGS slabs because half of them have been regraded twice or three times. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm just saying, I didn't think there was that many. I thought that mm -hmm. there was somewhere around 30 or 40 between all three mints. Yeah. There's, there's, uh, the 1943, yeah, it's uh, I th the the number that I read, the number that I looked up when I was trying to kind of combat this this BS statement was that there's 40 known examples, um, and I looked at a couple of different resources, and all of them said the exact same thing. So, uh, yeah, uh, 40. They know, oh, estimate 40 have been produced, and there are 27 known examples. So they're saying that there's probably 13 more out there. Yeah, but the likelihood that they got this hoard that, that yeah. were all the rest of them. Philly, no. one Denver. Yeah, no, that would have made yeah, huge, huge news. <laughs> it wouldn't have been a small little fake ad it's on Philly, Instagram. One Denver and five San Francisco. Say that again. The rest are Philly. Six Philly, one Denver and five San Francisco. Yeah, that's just on PCGS. Right. Yeah, this this was I Wikipedia a PDF, and actually it's from an article in PCGS. Yeah, PCGS has an article. Oh, and they they an break it out. They talk about how many are there. That up to 40, yeah. 1943 copper pennies were produced, and of yeah. these 40, there are 27 known surviving coins. The rarity makes them one of the most coveted sought after items in American numismatics. Yeah. Okay. And so they basically utilize that language to create this little ad and they may have, you know, they may have one of them or whatnot, but it, it's, again, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, folks be smart about it. You know, Hey, Shelby, and how you doing? Good to see you. Um, it's just one of those things. It's like, man, it, it drives me nuts. And the, the one that I did the other day, it drove me crazy. It really upset me. And that's the video that I did on the premier train where they were talking about stacking gold coins. And you know what they showed? Paula, take a guess. Stacking gold coins. An article by CBS and MSNBC. Probably plated coins. Say again? Were they plated? No. They stacking were... gold coins? They were probably like Sacagaweas or exactly what they were they no were the way. dollar coins <laughs> they showed the picture of the dollar coins and i'm like are you kidding me and oh, the, <clears throat> it was like what? oh my god are you you're nuts and it was it was targeting the elderly yeah. older folks older people need to stack gold and silver and they are gold and they need to collect coins and it's like and they showed i was like oh my god Eric, you would be surprised. So I've told this story before. I had a cousin whose wife, um, I was visiting them one, one year and 
she came up to me and she goes, I found a gold coin. I'm like, really? She goes, yeah, let me go grab it. It's in the safe. I said, okay. She said, I put it in this nice little holder and everything. I'm like, okay. So she comes downstairs and literally she has a sack of joya. I had to, I, I had to, I had to like go online and like show her because she just refused to believe me Yeah. that it was not a real gold coin. And we, you'd be surprised at the number of emails we get. And oh, I, I know are, all about. Yeah, they really think that they're gold. Like, it's crazy. And the worst part is you tell them it's not gold. And then they don't accept it. They just say, yep. you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to go somewhere yep. else. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and it well. doesn't matter. Paula Paula knows this probably better and better than the rest of us. But they will shop and shop and shop and shop and oh, shop for answers. Absolutely. You see that I have another story for you guys about that. You want to hear about something that just backfired incredibly on like all the 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 people in, in Facebook that try to help and everything, the experts and everything. That the this is this is on PCGS too. It is bad. So P, there was this guy who posted this coin for like a year had been posting this coin throughout Facebook, fishing for somebody to tell him, you know, that his coin was worth something. Well, it was a shield scent in crappy condition that was a vice job, right? Somebody had squeezed a memorial scent into the obverse, and, and so it had the impression, uh, reverse impression that. of a memorial scent. This guy refused to believe anybody that told him. So, of course, when it gets to that point, we go, okay, that they, they usually say, okay, well, I'm just going to have it graded. And then we never hear from them again, right? Because they've either, they either know that they don't have what they say they have, or they have sent it in and it comes back damaged. So they don't want to eat crow. So we just never see them again. Well, I'm going to pull this picture up of this coin for you guys, because I am, and, and, I this did my due diligence on this. And anything to do with the mint employee that bought like the gold coin in and he struck a, a scent in the center of it. And uh, they had to say they were real coins because they were real coins. Uh, even though the coins were manufactured a uh, hundred years apart. So let me. Yes, Keevan. <clears throat> Keevan Rose is in the house. Uh, Kevin, that is a uh, pickle. It is indeed. It, in fact, yodels. Let me share. Hang on. <clears throat> it is a yodeling pickle. If you don't mind. I know I'm like frostbite. Like I'm there. I gotta <clears throat> quit having that chick up. She just takes over my stream every time I do. Hang on. It's all good. No worries. Okay. What's going so, on, JJ? Know, if you can pull that up. So gotcha. that coin. I actually got a mint state 63 red brown straight graded and that's the other side and you can clearly see it has been it's a that, memorial scent stamp you know squeezed into it yeah that i'll bet you is from that junk cord from the mint employee it's horrible yeah. well he has the raw coin this guy has the raw coin um, there's the raw coin before he had it graded. Clearly see that it is a vice job. That coin should have never, even without that vice job, that coin should have never straight graded. It should have got an environmental damage. Um, it never <laughs> should have straight graded. And, and that's it what it is. Got damage, it, not environmental. Yeah. Well, yeah, just damage. Um, this guy will never believe a word anyone tells him ever again. Well, he'll believe PCGS and you know how I feel about them. Not that they're a bad thing. They have their place, but that's not the place. Just, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. So once again, and he, and he complained because he said, well, I didn't know I had to check the, the box to have the error put on it. So he's resubmitting this coin. Hopefully they catch it when he resubmits it. I did send in a complaint to PCGS and what I got from their customer service was we are not graders. We can't give you, we can't tell you why it's straight graded. Right. That's none of, none of your business. Thanks for nothing. Well, there was some uh, coins on 
crap measure, crap coin in your slabs, PC Jess, in so, your slabs. <clears throat> here's a question I have about that. Okay. That's going to make it out in the, into the market again. And do they know who graded it? Oh, they can they go do. back on the, on yeah. the serial, on the number. The bad because part about it is it's supposed to be two graders and a finalizer. So it's supposed to be three people with eyes on that coin. There's no way that coin was looked no up. Way. Way. Yeah. Yeah. No I way. I would, uh, because that right there, um, that that basically should destroy PCGS. But there's more than really. That. I mean, I'm because saying, it's Paula like has had to see <clears throat> these coins that they've been posting over the last couple weeks. I mean, like, and they were all done in one day supposedly. Uh, the guy struck a dime on a cent that was mm -hmm. already struck. And then he struck a cent on a gold, a, like a 1920 something oh, for crying gold out eagle. And they had them all graded and they graded straight because they were actually real coins and they actually were manufactured at the mint. The guy got busted for it. So wow. I, mean, I guess that makes some collectability to the coins because the guy did get busted that did it and that took him out. Yeah, it's like the Henning nickel. It's the same thing. It's well, there are a lot of mint assisted errors out there. Michael oh, Byers yeah. has some. I mean, yeah. they're, well, the, hell, the... they think the fifty-eight double die could be a mint assisted error. Oh yeah, I know, and they're ta also talking about the ninety-five D. Yeah. Um, they're pretty sure that that. Oh, that, that's not that is not a mint assisted error. That is a mint ordered error. I, I mean, think the 95P was too, because that's when they were transitioning into single hubbing, please. Mm -hmm. single squeeze hubbing. And I swear I saw a memorandum, and I think it was from Ken Potter. He wanted one more year. That said, we want to make these double dies. Mm -hmm. They did it on purpose yeah. to see why they were made and how they were made and show why they couldn't be reproduced in the future. Yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of shenanigans, and those should not those mint assisted things should not be called errors because they do not fall into the true category. Well, they're of double dies. They were made on purpose, though. But, right, right. Yeah, I mean, no, there's but now varieties are different. There are intention. There's unintentional and intentional varieties. There, right. there should not be any intentional errors. That's right. Because that is like an oxymoron. Well, that that's what intentional. I say. I think the collectability is more in the this guy did it and got busted and these are the mm -hmm. coins that they're, they're collectible um oh. that's like i was watching a video on counterfeiting and there was just a guy in canada that was busted they call him the best counterfeiter of all time because he did it on the books he actually was in canada and he thought you know how much time can i get for counterfeiting you know, an American dial. He, so he was going to, he counterfeited American $20 bills. And he started, he goes, well, I've got to have the right paper. So I've got to have 75% cotton, 25% linen. He starts calling paper companies and they're all laughing at him. Saying, what are you going to counterfeit American money? Because that's the only people that use this, this stuff. So finally he, he says, well, I'm going to try Europe. So he finds a company in Switzerland that says, sure, we'll make the paper. And he says, well, can you put a, a strip that says 20, USA 20, and a hologram of this guy on the paper? And they're like, sure, we can do that. <laughs> We're going to have to buy some equipment. So he bought the equipment for this company, this paper company. <laughs> and he buys the paper, puts out $300,000 for this paper order. It gets shipped to Canada and he already thinks he's going to get busted. So he's waiting at the container and he waits three days. Nobody comes. So he picks the container up and he drops it off where he's going to work at it and leaves it for, you know, and watches it under surveillance. Nobody comes. So finally he prints all this $250 million in $20 bills. And then he starts trying to sell them and we can't find a buyer. So he starts selling in 10,000, 100,000, stuff like that. And he didn't get busted till he had almost sold all the money. And his punishment, he, he didn't even get any jail time. It was just a fine. He actually, they didn't even take the money that he made off of it. That's away so from crazy. Because he wasn't an American citizen. So it's considered like the best counterfeiter of all time <laughs> because 
he actually made enough money to live the rest of his life. That's crazy. Like genuinely crazy. Yeah. Let's see if I can find the guy's name. One of the best counterfeiters for U.S. currency is actually Peru. Um, some of the best known counterfeits that ever have existed came from Peru. Uh, looking at when I did my one counterfeiting video where, where it was, uh, where's the money? And uh, the number one bill out in, out in, outside of the U.S. is counterfeit is the hundred dollar bill. But internally in the United States, the $20 bill is the number one most counterfeited. Yeah, the guy's name was Frank Barassa. And he did it in 2016. He got six weeks in jail. Plymouth Chris, a lot of older ones were blank Bible paper. Two sheets of paper together with a strip. Yeah, isn't that uh, kind of sacrilegious? Tax token catalog. What's that about? Paul, are you still there? Yeah, Kevin oh. was asking about uh, Washington oh, tax token. Oh, gotcha. So okay. Drop the catalog for him. Hey, Steve, looking for silvers here. What's um, going on, bud? Good to see is, you. Here is um, some information about American tax tokens. And for those of you that are looking for the currency stuff, we already talked about that at the very beginning. I can go over some more if you guys want to. Um, it was basically just answering a simple question. So. So there's some information from the uh, from the American Tax Token Society, because there's a society for just about everything in this hobby. <laughs> You're welcome, Keaton. Do you want to pull that up and go over it or do you want to just no okay <laughs> i just was asking i wasn't sure you have a no, tendency I mean, of wanting to do I that so. if you want to but it's not just, something i like know a whole ton about i just know where to find the information because we get questions about just about everything so <laughs> great resource I just know where to find information that's all great resource <laughs> Very cool. <clears throat> so what's new? What's going on? What uh, what events are happening? Anything fun for people? Church, but I'm not going because everybody's you got quick. the kids, huh? Yeah. Um, I'm going to watch the kids so my son and daughter in love can go. Um, she volunteers in the nursery, so she put a bunch of little pack In the one-year-old, she put a, lot, a bunch of little, little trinkets things together for the kids so she's gonna go and i'm so, gonna watch the kids ink man on the screen um this is the article and i put this in that earlier if you don't know which one it is on your military currency you're gonna see whatever it might be so you'll see that some of them are japan you'll see some of them are europe um but what you do is you look at the serial the 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 series number and if you look at the series number, it'll say something like, for instance, you come over here and you see that 541 was done in Japan and South Korea. And so you'd be able to look at that series, kind of know what's going on, and then you'd be able to research some of the additional numbers. This link, and I'll go ahead and I'll put this in chat um, for everybody. So that's the link for that paper money. This comes from the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. So if you have these military currency, you have these particular items and you're interested in learning more about it, again, they show the images. There's a little bit about how it was produced, but this is from the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. It's a great article. It's something that'll really be beneficial. So if you want to go check that out, go over there and look at that. And that's uh, that's where I pulled up the information for this. Um, there's also... I'll shoot a picture of it and send it to you. Absolutely. Yeah, you can do that. And then I'll give you whatever information I can. There are also on LiveCoin Q&A. There are two people in LiveCoin Q&A who are really good at this. There's also Kingdom Currency. Um, Kingdom he doesn't Currency. do stuff like that. He, he just does regular dollar bills. I'm pretty sure he just does like serial numbers. and. Okay, stuff. that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you want to know anybody who really understands a lot about currency and the value of currency... Kingdom Currency is a really good place to go. Um, 
And um, but if you're looking for uh, the resident kind of community experts, now there's other people that know a lot about this. I know Big Apple Stacker is a huge collector, so he has a lot of currency and things of that mm-hmm. nature. But um, Blue Ridge Silverhound is really smart about that. And then Shannon Smith from Lifecoin Q and A, they are both very knowledgeable about notes. So if you want to know more about that, Paula just put in another. Um, that is a American Numismatic Association link. Yes, and, and if you scroll down to the bottom of that page, there are some books um, and and a couple other resources too for um, information on military payments. So well, I'm actually going to just go ahead and bring that up. This um, it's it, a great it's a great little short little read about it. Yep. Just kind of gives you a short history and yeah. Um, I mean, there's not really a lot to know about it. It's it just kind of is. It's something that just is what it is, and um, there's no mystery. Yep. And no. this link is also in the description. This link I had already had this link in the description of the video, so this link is in there as well because this is one of the items that I pulled out. So you'll see this one as well as the Bureau of Engraving Printing's article. So if you want to know more about that, that's where you. Go find those two items. Um, but again, if you're really wanting to know more about that, you have uh, something that you want to do, then go ahead and go check out. Um, you can reach out LiveCoin Q&A. Uh, take photos of whatever you're doing. Make sure they're good quality photos, right? Make sure they're, they're good lighting. Make sure they're clean. They're clear. And then when you ask a question, don't say, what do you think? <laughs> don't say, hey, how much is it worth? Ask a very specific question. I'd like to know more about the origination and maybe the mintages of this particular item, right? That's very poignant. Mm-hmm. It's very specific. It tells them exactly what it is that you're looking for. It asks them. Yeah. So some of these are beautiful. I mean, like this is the one that I just showed earlier at the very beginning that actually is only from Vietnam. You'll only see this one from Vietnam and that series 681 won't be from anywhere else. Um, but I love the artistry. That's that's one thing about the the currency. If there was anything, it'd be the artistry and currency that just uh, just I just enjoy it. But I'm still so new to this hobby that uh, I just don't I just don't know a lot about currency yet. So um, we'll make sure that you know, and I don't need to be the resource for everything. There's also so many people who are way more knowledgeable in so many areas. Um, if you try to be the expert in all areas, you'll end up being the expert in none. Nothing. Well, yep. Being the expert in one area, yeah. you can't hardly be an expert. <laughs> exactly. Well, and and again, you know, you've got to be you got to be very focused, very diligent. I don't mind being a center point for your information. So if you want to have, you know, say, hey, you know, Frosty, I'm trying to find out information about this. I can give you a little bit of information based off the research I do and find out who the point of contact is. Um, most likely it's going to include Paula <laughs> Me. Um, because, well, and I say that because Paula has some amazing resources. I do. Um, the that. live coin Q and a uh, have uh, an I'm extreme blessed. vast amount of knowledge. But if you guys want to come to me and say, Hey, you know what's going on? I'll do the research. I'll do the due diligence. This is what I enjoy. Um, my channel is educational. Right. I try to be a little bit fun and try to have some entertaining factors, but I want to provide it in a way that that helps. But I'm not even going to try to learn everything. You know what I thought was funny when I was reading about these military payment certificate things? What's that? Is the shenanigans that the military tried, that the service members tried to pull. (laughs) Yeah, they're human. And and how they, how the government was like, um, uh, 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 uh. Nope. Yep. (laughs) One of my one of my favorite episodes. Oh, now, <clears throat> I don't know how many people. Let's do this. Okay, we've got a couple people in in the other chat. There's not very many, but how many people know the TV show Mash? Okay, mm-hmm. no, I'm not I'm not affiliated with any of that. But there is an episode in Mash, and if you're not familiar with Mash, is Mash is a 60s, 70s, 80s. A comedy show that ran three times longer than the Korean War. Drama comedy. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. Absolutely an amazing show. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. 
But there was an I episode think coming on Netflix again. again yeah, I yeah. About that. Oh, nice. Um, hey, West Texas Stacker, what's going on, bud? Good to see you, bud. Yeah, and so the one thing about there was an episode where they had this military currency and they needed uh, to raise some money for somebody that had something back home. Hey, what's going on? My mom's in chat. Hi, mom. Um, happy Easter. Happy um, Easter. Colonel Potter. Yes, and I like uh, I like Colonel Potter more than I do here. Yeah, um, and I like Radar better than I liked Klinger. Uh, Radar. I like Klinger, but Radar was the was the better clerk. Um, but anyway, when you're looking at this uh, this episode, they did some amazing amazing shenanigans with. Uh, recreating a new person and trying to put somebody on the books and do payment and uh, all this stuff. And then they faked his death and they sent all this money back home uh, to this person. It, it was hilarious. Um, so I'll see if I can't find that, whether it be on YouTube or somewhere and uh, pay attention to the, uh, the chat. I'll try and throw that in chat. Uh, it's a great episode about military currency the scripts it's hilarious but i'll see if i can find that and i'll make sure that i can uh i can do that so well they had to go so far as to do each time a new series came out they did like a demonetization of the old one and they had to do it secretly <laughs> they're like they had a like a day that yeah, nobody knew somebody. about it was just hush hush nobody none of the service members knew when the old stuff was going to not have any value anymore and the new stuff was going to come in so they'd have this old stuff and go to spend it. And all of a sudden, like, nope, sorry, it's no good. <laughs> they had to do it secret. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I and thought that part was funny. <laughs> like, I, like I said, there were a lot of there were a lot of things where they used to um, and, and they were worried about people actually like theft of that. Um, but they would actually jack with the countries, too. And so. What they would do is, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but another nation could not turn in the military currency. Right. No, I did know that. They couldn't yeah. do it. And right. so what they would do is they would try to get service members to turn it in for them, and then they would give them money back. The problem was is that the currency, when they when you would change it in, it got put into a ledger, and then they would balance that ledger, and they would say, you made four thousand dollars in the last six months. That was one of the reasons why they did that secret demonetization. Yeah. 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 Now, wasn't there a way that the local merchants, because a lot of this was spent in local economies, the local merchants had a way to uh, get their currency. But I don't think it was supposed to be though. No. No. So they, when they got the money back, it wouldn't be in American dollars. It would be like, say, they were doing rupees. And, yeah. Uh, so what would happen with a hundred rupees, they would turn one of these coupons in and the U S government would give them a hundred rupees. Yeah. So what would happen the... is that you would have, um, you would have military currency in places. Now there are a couple different reasons for it, right? So let's say that the local, local area. So we'll talk about, we, we were just talking about mash. So I'll just mention Korea because Korea 50 to 53. So you have you have Korea going on and you have a massive amount of military members being pushed into an economy. They may not have the numbers on currency, so they may not have. So I'm going to go ahead and flash this back up again really quick. Um, right. So they may not have and we'll just do, you know, this one's Vietnam or we'll do this. It doesn't matter which one they may not have this piece of currency available in the numbers they needed in order to pay the soldiers. That country may not have enough money printed or they may not have the availability to be able to pay them in their local currency. So what they would do is they would do these scripts on a temporary note or a temporary basis until they could get enough currency in that particular area to pay those uh, pay those sailors or pay the army or the Marines or whatever in that country's currency. 
Yeah, but they said that they the one of the problems that they were having why they did it was because they had too much of that nation's currency. They were ending up with too much of that nation's currency. The U.S. was because because in the beginning, service members like that. So they would go to a country whose like dollar was like had like hardly any value. So that kind of the people the 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 nationals wanted our money instead. So right, this was were, why these were made. Yep. Right. So the U.S. service members were giving them were like selling our our currency to them, and then we would end up with a the, they would end up with a, a abundance of of that nation's currency and would go out and buy you know a ton of stuff because they right. had more money. And, and that's why, the, like, the if government the government ended up with back, the, huh? That's why with the merchants brought back a five dollar certificate. They, there was a way there was there was somebody on the base that they could turn this money into and then they would get let's say uh it was 10 won on the dollar right uh they would give them korean wands back uh they right. wouldn't give them dollars so right. it was done at the current we, exchange rate always yeah and and at the, the the problem in the beginning was that we were ending up with all of this foreign this foreign currency and we had like a surplus of it. So yep. that I, maybe I'm getting it wrong. That was, that was my understanding when I was reading it, that that was like the, the, the um, origin of it all. Was yeah. Like so what, what it says here, and I'm going to try and put this, it's going to be difficult. So I'm going to have to go back and forth a little bit, but if the troops obtained the American military currency in excess of their actual pay through official means, there was no way to control the conversion of the extra AMC into additional dollars. So what what they would do is they would try because again, let's say that we're talking, um, we're just we'll just speak Vietnam or Korea. It doesn't matter which one. Um, let's say that the conver conver convergence or uh, the currency conversion, excuse me, uh, was basically fifteen to one, right? And so. People that were in that area, people that were in the uh, the shops, the bars, the parlors, whatever yeah, the local it was, people, the people right? The there. locals wanted the U.S. dollar because it was worth so much more money. And so what they would do is they would obviously trade, but they weren't allowed. They weren't supposed to be accepting that, right? The military told you're not supposed to be utilizing right. the U.S. currency to do that. The scripts kept people from getting the u.s currency so they stopped allowing military members in those areas to have u.s currency right. um and that's why they you know they would de demonetize those scripts and so basically what would be left in that in that situation was that you would have these people and they would have all this massive amount of money that they wanted to trade in, but the government wouldn't allow those local people to trade it back in because they weren't no, supposed they to be did. having That's it what anyway. It was all about. Uh, this money was used until they could get the actual local money that was supposed to be there. That's what mm -hmm. I just said a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so when the, when the merchants, they would come, they, they had a, it was different than a soldier. They had a way they could go turn the money in and then they would get local currency in return. They just weren't out of the money. Um, actually, no, in some cases they were out the money. Um, I, and I think it, there was a timetable put in place, but yeah, I mean, if they come back three years later, cause they found well, out, that was why they did those secret demonetization things. Yep. Because what, what would, it. exactly. Um, because what would happen, and this was a major problem in Vietnam, they would demonetize something. And then what would happen is those local merchants would actually come through and be really ticked off. And they well, would do they things the script again. Yeah. Well, not only yeah, that, they were, but they were like coming after military members. Like they, they were, were they, yeah, dangerous. they were planting bombs and shooting people mm -hmm. and giving away secrets and doing all sorts of stuff. So that was a practice that they had to stop. And so that was one reason that they would like what, what Paul is saying on that demonetization conversion of those secret day. things. Right. Day. Right. Yep. Yeah. And what they would do it, they would do it. Normally they would do it tied to troop movement. And so when they were getting ready to move, they would do a demonetization and they wouldn't tell the soldiers, right? Because yeah. again, they told them they, they would cash in a bunch of stuff and try to make in some extra money mm -hmm. because 
if you had the currency and you went to another area where they accepted that currency, you could still trade it in locally. Right. So there were still they they could use that money in other locations. The problem was, is that the people in that nation that were doing it, there were a lot of times in which they were not able to recoup the money, even in their own currency. And it caused issues like massive, massive issues. It was such a problem in Vietnam that what would happen is that they would send merchants who were well known people who cut hair or tailors or things of that nature, and they would actually plant devices and, and do, um, if, if you've seen like Apocalypse Now or you've seen sure. Cherry Hill or you've seen some of those movies where they actually would walk from the gate and they would report back, you know, from the gate, it's 22 paces by seven paces. And they would give them basically a, a map so that when the enemy went to, to attack that, they would have the mortaring positions. And so there were a lot of reasons that this actually became a very, very, very bad thing. Um, so that was one of the reasons why they wouldn't allow for um, the, the military members to, or why they shouldn't have uh, allowed the military members to spend those particular items um, out in public. There were a very, very short window for them to trade that stuff in. But That's again, say, the, but there was a window for them to trade it in. Very, very small. Um, yeah. And a lot of times they weren't necessarily like they had to be in line and ready when the people were there. And if they missed it, they were out. They just, they lost it. And um, this was something that in, again, talking mash, talking about that particular item, this is something else that they had um, when they would do that. You would see the military members um, that they would they'd be walking around, and then you'd see this line of the nationals that were trying to trade in their currency. And if they got there after the person had closed the deal, they couldn't do it. That was actually based off fact. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure that procedurally it was different in yeah. every every uh, occupancy or occupation because uh, you you know you learn from one. You learn from another. You learn different things. The one in Vietnam, it just sounds like somebody was getting rich. That's what it sounds like to me. I hate to say isn't that. Isn't there usually, like, isn't that usually? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was just about to say that, Paul. That's somebody's that's, always that's kind of the standard norm. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody was on the, on, the, on the receiving end of something good. Yeah. So Wolf Metals um, said something in the other chat, and that was that it's interesting that you have both formats at once. Um, you wouldn't normally have both formats at once. What would happen is that the military currency was issued as a sh for a very short time until that it's host nation could get enough money um, so that they could pay those military members. Once they yeah, had so enough money to do that. I thought he was talking about landscape and portrait. <laughs> Say what? I thought, that, I thought he was talking about landscape and portrait mode. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I thought, well, we were talking money, so. <laughs> um, yeah, Wolf Metals, I did that so that uh, if you're on your phone, then you can do that. You can navigate to each one of them just by going to the chat and clicking on the link up above. And it'll, if you don't want to be in landscape mode, you want to be in portrait mode, then you can click on it and then get over there. Um, but yeah, so there there were some West Texas stacker. Best haircut I ever had was along the DMZ. Um, a lot of goods and services were done. A lot of trading was done in that area. A lot of purchasing was done. Um, and so a lot of times military members would do what they could to help out the locals. Um, but the military frowned on a lot of that and they put things in place that prevented it. Um, and what, where, where the, the, the host nation really got hurt was unannounced sudden troop movements where you would have a sudden troop movement that occurred and they wouldn't have time to transfer the monies. They wouldn't have time to do some of that. So in in many cases, you would have local farmers and small villages that if they were moving five miles away, that village would move with the with the military unit um, because it was the only way in which they could sustain and survive because they if, if they left and they weren't able to cash in for what they had, they were basically left with nothing. And so mm -hmm. you would see some of these um, what do they call them gypsy gypsy style. Uh, caravans that would move along with the military transports 
um, through things like Vietnam and, and Korea and stuff like that. Now it was, it was glamorized and Hollywoodized in mash. Uh, but a lot of that stuff was taken from um, actual reports and stories and stuff like that. So while mash was a, uh, a dramatic comedy, uh, there were a lot of truths based in mash. Uh, it pointed a lot to uh, the political flavor of, where we were at during that time frame and and some of the things that happened but yeah pretty cool it's a it's a fun thing i love i love the currency i just haven't been able to really study it and again if you're in here and you haven't been so do me a favor hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up um how many how many likes do we have right now oh, or or nah, you got to refresh bud i'm not gonna refresh <laughs> Yeah, that's that, you know when they issues on my end. When they did no, when they did their update with that interface, you can't you can't just see. And I think it was done on purpose, me personally. On this stream we have 43. Okay. Well, we got to get a couple more folks. And I don't know about the um portrait mode. I can go check. So, but um they did, yeah, 44 outstanding. Thanks, Chris G. Um when they did that update, I think they did it for a reason. And this is this is conspiracy me now. I don't I don't do a lot of conspiracies. But I think what happens is when you refresh 17 on the other one. They get ad time. Right? Mm, yes. And so in order to see the new subscriptions and the new counts, you have to refresh. That's another ad that gets issued. So I I Then it I, only counts if you watch it for like 15 seconds or something, right? Or Sometimes they force you to watch it for 15 yeah. seconds. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And so I think I think it was kind of, I don't want to say it was a ploy, but I think it was an ad tactic. Um, 18 likes over there. Yeah, I've see, seen weird numbers. It's okay. It's all good. Um, between the two of them, we're at 50. So I'm going to do something. And I'm going to do one in each side. No, I told you it's really weird because like right now I'm showing like four people watching in, in portrait and 18 in landscape. But so at, at the end of it, like it should show like less views in the in the portrait than the landscape, yeah. but it doesn't like it. Your your views will go up in the other one. It's weird. I don't understand it. Yeah, so my portrait you. mode. Um, so who got this? Wolf Metal stacking, outstanding. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. Uh, Wolf Metals, do me a favor. Uh, get my email. You can do exclamation point email. Um, and uh, I got something for you. So send me an email. Um, why is my Nightbot not picking up? And there it is. You got my email there. Frost giant, frost giant, frostbite at gmail.com. So go ahead and send me a uh, a claim email. Let me know. And then I got something that I want to send you. Congratulations. Um, but congratulations. So that's for the 50 likes because between the two of them, we got 50. So we're cool. <clears throat> now, Coin Cruise, they're, they're doing an auction today, right? I think they said they were. I don't know. Thanks, Wolf Metals. Don't Appreciate you, bud. I can't remember who said it, but something is the Korean War could have been avoided if the country was divided into North and South. Um, maybe uh, a lot of the Korean War had to do with um, land land ownership of a couple extreme resources. Can't do it, David. It's only a uh, a owner command. But I don't know if it's going to happen on that side. I tried to do two commands on that side, and it's not working. We'll see if it comes back up right now. It didn't show up in the other side, but we'll see. Um, but there were there were issues over the parallel, like, like the location, that debarkation line. But I don't, I can't tell you any more about that. I know that. Uh, um, yeah, actually, I don't it's know a crew 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 crew. Auction today. Wolf said no crew auction. Today. No coin crew auction today. It's well, easier. cool. Okay, that means okay. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to forward you guys anywhere. So we can do whatever we want to. Uh, you guys like karaoke? No. Paul, Paula sings a mean song. I, d I don't, <laughs> and you will lose viewers and probably subscribers. 
Oh, I'll be listed as a comedy channel. I'm telling you, it's like a, it's like a bad <laughs> war cry. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, it's like na- nails on a chalkboard. Let's see if that's oh, what I'm on. You, everybody knows Love Shack. The Love, Love Shack. Shack is a little. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Anxious stackers in the house. What's going on, buddy? Said he doesn't know there. I didn't know there was military currency. So you know, I like the military currency. Obviously. Um, oh, so you know what? Happy Easter again, everybody. Um, I haven't said Happy that for Easter. quite a while. He is risen. So uh, hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day today. Um, but I would like to also say thank you to the men and women who serve or have served in our United States military. Thank you. If you serve your military abroad, I <laughs> salute you. Thank you so much. Um, but I would also like to thank our first responders. Again, they sometimes have a very thankless job. And this is something that I like to do. Um, I don't do it every stream, but I probably should. But again, if you're a military member or you're a vet, I know West Texas is a vet. I know that me is a vet. I know that uh, Paula is a vet. I'm a vet. I know we got quite a few in chat. Um, if if you're a vet or you're a, a, a first responder, please do me a favor, put a one in chat. Uh, just so we can say thank you. I appreciate that. Um, again, I hope you guys um, really do respect and appreciate the sacrifice that these folks make to make sure not only that you guys are safe, but to make sure that uh, the services that are provided um, are, are of the utmost benefit to the community. So. And I want to say something about that. If you have ever wanted to join the military and for whatever reason, physical or whatever, you were not able to, I'd like to say thank you. Because that means a lot too. A lot of people wanted to serve and just for whatever reason, they weren't able to. And that's important. Just the willingness is important. I agree. Um, so our, 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 today. Our, our military um, recruitment is way down. Um, morale is way down. Support for the country is way down. Yeah, right I, now. The military morale. My son says it's, it's fine. It's not fine. It he, I mean, like I said, okay. he's on he's on duty right now. I got a text from him yesterday saying, "Of all the days I get stuck with duty, it, it's uh, you know, he went in at midnight and gets off tomorrow at like eight in the morning." It's always okay when you're, you know, if you're happy in your, your unit and, and things are, are good. And I mean, but overall, the morale is not good. Recruitment is way down. Recruitment is down. He did say that. Um, I mean, he got, he, he, if I'm not mistaken, he got promoted just unit. to get he's promoted. Really happy. So, you know, he, they yeah. probably have really good command, um, local command. Um, I, I'm so not sure. Uh, he he said that he all the only thing that he wishes it was different is he was eye level. Yeah, I get it. Uh, he's on the Gerald Ford, and he says uh, there's you know there's better places to be stationed. Yeah, I get it. Well, not to mention his family lives in San Diego, and he's in Norfolk. So, but here's the thing about that: um, that happens in business. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there are good companies to work for, and there are other companies where you can have a really good job. But the company itself is difficult, uh, whether it be policy procedure, whether it be you know, there's a statement about. Yeah, got your email. I did get that. Thanks, Wolf Metals. Um, most people don't quit their job; they quit their managers. Um, well, and, that's true. Yeah, and so there's you. You can say, oh well, certain commands. Yeah, but you know what? You can go from a command cl- climate that's horrible to changing commands and it being one of the best ones you've ever been at. Yeah. So dynamics can change. I'm just talking Uh, about overall, you know, like, I mean, a lot of military members right now don't know whether to scratch their watch or wind their butts. You know what I mean? Um, It's like a daily change in, in things. And it's just, I went to, so I went, I went through air force basic training cakewalk, right. Compared to some of the other branches. Easy peasy, um, but it, but compared when I went through to compared to what they go through now, like it was it was like going through the Marines back. You know, I mean, if you do the comparison, 
I went to San Antonio um, a few years back. My my daughter had joined and was she hurt her ankle like right before graduation, so she wasn't able to graduate. It was heartbreaking, but we already had our plans, so we went to the graduation anyway and went and saw her. She was in med hold, but we went we walked around and watched how some of the the TIs in the Air Force they're called training instructors how they they are not allowed to yell at the recruits. Oh. I mean it's it's it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. We, we took a tour of the of the barracks that they they are now and they have vending machines for crying out loud in the hallways. Like it's it's incredible. I blame Think, participation trophies. Oh exactly. It's it's unbelievable. And they when I was going through if you got put in med hold, you stayed in med hold until you were able to rejoin your another yep. another um or flight. they boarded you out. And and go and finish. Now, yeah, now if you're in med hold, they just go okay, bye, you know. So a lot of a lot of and they did it back then because a lot of kids would go in and they'd be like Oh, I hate this. I I don't. I changed my mind. So they would fake an injury and they would get put in med hold, thinking they were going to be released. Well, that wasn't how it worked. The military had by that time had already spent so much money getting you yep. there yep. that they were not going to let you go. Well, now they stub their toe and they get put in med hold and get released. Like it's unbelievable. So. Anyway, I don't know about that anxious. My son says, sir and ma'am to everybody, whether you're in the military or not the military. Right. Everybody. I mean, even when he talks to me and I say, hey, we got to do this and this and this. He's a, yes, sir. So there are there are certain areas where um, and this is what he's saying is actually kind of truth. Um, pronouns putting pronouns on your emails as a military or a government employee um, indicating what your pronouns are. My preferred pronouns are, you know, she, it, because I am the she, it. Um, she, it. Um, but it's, it, you. so there, there are certain situations depending upon the command and things like that where, yes, uh, sir, ma'am, again, and, and now, do you have to do that? It depends on your local policy, right? Um, I still use you know, sir and ma'am regardless. And, and that's what say, I'm talking about. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anybody yeah. out there. That isn't the last of my intentions, but I that would not fly with me. That would not fly with me. Um, I, you know, I, we need to serve the masses and and the majority and not the minority like we have to consider the big picture and there are things that are happening right now that are going to get people killed yeah my, like, my whole theory on this it's, it is I'm not, scary i'm not gonna say the word the word but way too many people have way too many extra f's to give yes yep yep exactly yes. Exactly. If they worried about themselves a little bit extra and quit worrying about what everybody else does, we'd be a better place. You yeah, know, exactly. th there's the Rodney King, right? Can't we all just get along? We have lost the ability. And I've said this, God, I don't know how many times because it's something that just drives me crazy. Argue, fight, disagree with me. I don't care. And we can still be friends. Right. We can still yeah. be friends. We can still talk. Critical thinking comes from objective viewpoints. I need to know that you don't agree with me. Tell me that I'm wrong. Tell me that I'm an idiot. But you know what? Tell me why in a respective manner. Don't just say, well, you're an idiot and then walk off and expect me to just go, oh, okay, thank you. No, uh, tell me why. Um, if you have a, a belief system, great. No problem. I don't care if you're Hindu Muslim. I don't care if you're Jew. I don't care if you're Wiccan. I don't care if you're atheist. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not well, going to push what person. I believe on you. I'm going to tell you what I believe. And if you say I'm not interested, I stop. Not a big deal. But I am not going to hold. A, oh, you're Wiccan. Oh, I can't. I, I, I can't talk with you. I can't be around you. Oh, my God. You, you like trees. What the hell's wrong with you? Or, 
don't you know trees cause pollution? Like, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't do that kind of stuff because if you want to believe that, fine, go ahead. You're cool. Do it. I don't mind because I'm going to get a viewpoint of things that I don't have by listening and talking to you. Now, are you going to change my mind? Maybe. Are you going to change Paula's mind? No. Definitely not. Not until you've given her ad adequate <laughs> facts, shown her resources. That's right. Right? Because, no, I know this about Paula, and sometimes Paula and I, I'm like, I just don't agree with that. But you know what? It doesn't but matter. You got to tell me why, man. Yeah. You and and I don't. Why. I'm not. I won't. See. You tell me I'm wrong. And that our conversation does not end there. So, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, here's the thing. Okay. No way. No. I, I don't. I, I, so that stuff doesn't oh, bother yeah, me. You know, I used to, I used to live in Utah, and people would be like, "Oh, you must be Mormon." No, I'm not. I'm not LDS. I'm not Mormon. Well, you lived in Utah. Is it bad there? It's like, we're just they're just people. They have a belief system. I some I have ten wives. Some I Come understand. On. Some I don't. Those are polygamists. They're extremists. <laughs> Um, there are people who are there are people who are non LDS that have more wives than that. But anyway, um, and so it, it, but it doesn't matter. People are people, and what we have forgotten to do as a people, what we have forgotten as a society, primarily at on the in the West, but as a society, we just don't agree to disagree. We just can't just get along. We, I mean. I don't care how much you argue. I don't care how much you fight. I don't care how much you disagree with somebody. I've got friends that we almost never see eye to eye. But I know that if I'm out at two o'clock in the morning in a heavy rainstorm and I get a flat, their ass is going to get out of bed. They're going to drive 50 miles and they're going to give me the tools to help me change my tire. Frostbite, here's so real quick. <clears throat> I am like, I, I don't care what you do in your personal life. I really don't. If you're a good person, you're good in my that, book. That's it. That's you are okay it's in my simple, book. My thing is there, when it comes to the military, there is a point where you have to draw a line because there are certain theaters that you, that the military will go into where some of this, like, you know, Oh, I know. Men identifying as women and stuff will get an entire unit killed. That's where I have to look in. in. Oh, I get, yeah. Well, you know here's I mean? the thing. How many there, people there actually care? Kids. You have to look at the big picture in some of this stuff. You know, all these people, like, you see these on YouTube, a video. Uh, So-and-so is coming out as gay. Mm -hmm. who, who cares? Right. Yeah. I don't care. Why do oh, you what? actually care enough to have to tell the world? Yeah. You know, tell your friends, tell your mom, whatever. And Ad you advertising. And your Marry your goldfish. I don't Ad care. Advertising. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's all about clicks and likes and watch time. It's they don't give a rat's ass about that. I'm people. never gonna be good at that, obviously. They don't. Mm -hmm. It's all about mm -hmm. clicks and watch time. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even you see this stuff on the news, you know, this person is doing this. So they're going to put her in the woman. hip. will put it in the woman's league. They, they're doing it all wrong. Target was the only people that handled. Oh, yeah. Right. Add an extra bathroom and put anything goes on the sign. You know, you got men, you got women and you got unisex, whatever you're, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Uh, that's what you do with the NCAA. You have. Men's tennis, women's tennis, and anything goes tennis. Malcolm, here's how I feel about that. A country without a border is not a country. That's how I feel about that. In a country it's without simple, rules is in a country. You gotta have rules. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Like we there's a full out invasion going on right now. We have no border. But that's all. That's my opinion. That's it. That's not the opinion well, kind of, of this content note, creator. <laughs> somebody said they saw a skunk ape around here. A skunk cave? What's a skunk, a skunk cave? ape? Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Yeah. We get a lot well, of Bigfoot sightings in Florida. They're supposedly just like the Oregon Bigfoot, but they well, smell worse. Yeah, well, but you know why that yeah, is? Just like the Oregon, nothing smells worse than an Oregon Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> 
well, you know, big old sweaty Florida Bigfoot probably does. But but it's 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 vacation season, Eric. Yeah, that's uh, big, true. Bigfoot that's has true. to go on vacation too. Uh, this is the last week, and people start going home yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Let our kids be kids. Yeah. Let the kids be kids. Let kids be kids. I'm good. I'm good with that. Yeah. Let them be kids. I mean, listen, there was a time I can remember. Thank God I was not a young pre adolescent growing up in today's standards because I would probably be Paul. Because I went through a, a long period of time as an adolescent where I wished I was a boy. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that my dad wanted a son so bad. That well, that's he, where the term tomboy came from. Yeah, and I was a huge tomboy. I mean, I really was. Like, I, I, there, but I, I legit was like, I wish I was a boy. I could pee standing up. Like, I mean, like the whole deal. And well, here's if, the thing, Paula, you can pee standing that, up without being a boy. Huh? I says, you can pee standing up. That's the thing. Well, it's I can, over. but it's, it's messy. Sure. Um, yeah. All right, yeah. folks, come on. <laughs> We're getting carried away here. Right? Yeah, well. But I'm just saying. like, But the point is thing. clearly made, right? And, yeah. Uh, you know, again. Talk to your kids. What, what and, and I say this jokingly, but I say it seriously. How many guys in here put on their mom's high heels and tried to walk around when they were young boys? My feet were too big. So, well, but my point is, is that just because they did something because they saw their mom do it or a girl yeah. does something because they saw their dad do it doesn't mean that they're confused. That's right. You put right. my grandson in putting on his mom's makeup. <laughs> like, right. like, my, my, my dad put it best to my mom. <laughs> uh, I don't even remember what it was about. It was about my sister. He, she just said, let, let, let them be kids. Yeah. Exactly, Malcolm. Yeah. You know, let, yep. let your kids be kids. And then when they become adults, you know, hopefully the lessons they learned as kids come through. Is my mom still in chat? I think she might still be in chat. She may have left when it when it went off the rails. She Tell us some took secrets, off. mom. Tell us some secrets. <laughs> well, but here's like, so one of the things that we talked about this, I would wake up in the morning and I would get on my bike. I would ride my bike 30, 40, 50, 60 miles a day. No joke. Yeah, you'd go out at you'd go out and, after breakfast and yep. And if uh, I was going to be late, if I was going to be home, come on. anywhere close to dark, I would call her. I would stop at a grocery store or a convenience store, or I would stop at a payphone because we had payphones. We had the little things there, and we could just pick it up, dial operator, and say, you know, I need to call, collect, call, and say, I'm going to be late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I, we didn't even do that. If we if, if we were playing baseball or something, and we saw a street light, it was on. You were on your bike, and you were going as fast as you could because uh, if it was dark, you were in. Well, but in there deep, were there were water. times, Eric. There were times where so when I was younger, um, I grew up in different places. But one area, oops, who'd we lose? We lost Paula. Her her power went out. Um, one thing that. So I used to ride my bike a lot. I used to ride, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles. No, no joke. And I had friends that lived 23 miles from my house and I would ride my bike to see them. And I knew, I say, I did the same thing, Malcolm. Um, yeah, me, I, but I that. knew that if I didn't leave at a certain time, but if we were playing games and running around and I was a little bit late, I would call my mom and say, Hey, this is where I'm at. This is the route I'm taking home. I may be on the border of being late. And then she would make the determine of whether or not, you know, she came and got me. She had to pick me up one time and I called her and I had went and seen a friend of mine and they live like 45 miles away. And I rode my bike to go see him as a kid. I wanted to go see my friend, right? Cause we had telephones, but it's not like you could just pick up your cell phone and chat. I rode 40 miles to see my friend and I called her and I said, I need you to pick me up. She's like, okay, where are you at? And I told her, she was like, you're where? <laughs> You rode your bike there? I'm like, yeah, I wanted to see him. It was like, oh my God. Uh, okay. So, you know, she showed up and obviously we got home well after dark. Um, but we played, you know, I mean, I would go out in the woods and I would, you yeah. know, look at rocks or we'd go walk the, uh, walk the train tracks and you know, those little pebbles, the round pebbles. Sure. Somebody remembers what they're called. I can never remember what they're called, but we used to go collect those and use them for our wrist rockets. 
right? We would go out to oh the iron ore pellets. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, we would go we would go do all that stuff and go check that out. And you know we had fields and um, we would go take. Okay, uh, David Carlisle, thanks for hanging out with me well, today. I appreciate it. Day, you'd make a new wrist rocket. Um, well, have you seen the little wrist rockets that have the little like bow and arrow? Oh, I just used to make them out of like little bar steel that we'd have around. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, and, uh, but we, yeah. we did all sorts of stupid stuff. We always did stuff that, you know, looking back at it now, it's like, man, I'm lucky. Oh, we, I'm but lucky here we you didn't go. Die. You could be trusted with a wrist rocket. Uh, if something happened, it was truly an accident. Now, if you gave your kids wrist rockets, they'd be shooting each other. We shot each other too. We just didn't pull it back. All yeah, the way. but you didn't like shoot each other like I'm sp speaking of. You yeah. would put targets on trees. You would yeah. try to shoot. Yeah, squirrels. yeah. You would try. You know, we would go. Uh, we would go hunt ducks and pheasants with our wrist rockets. Yeah. Uh, Every once in a while, now, we'd get one to bring one home. The first thing is, is well, it's like Fortnite. Boom! Hit my brother Joe in the neck with one. First shot. I mean, before it had to evolve for two or three weeks before we started shooting each other. Well, we used to, I mean, we used to do dumb things. Um, and so, oh, you know, looking back that. at it, but you couldn't do the stuff we did as a kid now. No, no, you couldn't. You just Absolutely could not. not. Yeah. Oh, man. Would be, would be in so much trouble. I, mean, like, I can remember horrible. garbage picking lawnmowers and making mini bikes and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I'm losing yeah. everybody on the other side. They're all taking off. <laughs> it's yeah, all good, folks. I know we're just chit chatting. You don't want to hear about my life story. We would ride our bikes across the Mississippi rivers to buy fireworks. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a different world, right? We would do different stuff back in that day. Yeah. All is back. Sorry All about right. that. That's okay. Did you back get your coffee? Um, Anybody get any cool coins lately? What? Anybody get any cool coins lately? Um, no. No, but you know what's really cool? I got one, from Elongate. One of my favorite coins just sold for a million plus dollars. Uh oh. What? Stella? Stella. I thought it went for like 900 and something thousand. That's a million. Uh, oh, well, enough. the total number, I think, well, that might have been after fees. Oh. I thought it was like 1.13 or something like that. But it, that might have included well, the fees. Our package went for $31,200. That's a cool story. I can't believe it went for that much. Yeah, that's right? cool. What's up, but Gary? Hey, it, you know, that's what true value is, is what somebody's willing to pay for it. And obviously somebody wanted it. There are a lot of big time steel scent error collectors out there, man. And this, that's a doozy. Yeah. It's a doozy. What did yeah. I get? This but, but just about everything in that auction that night went. For it went high. Prices. It did. It was all high. Yeah, it was. There were a few items that didn't make reserve, but other than that, everything went like crazy high. So they had some heavy hitters. I had somebody give me a nickel that is a bar ERT. Really? Uh, yeah, bar six, 63D bar six. Do you have it? I do. Show it because I'm it not sure it? what you're saying. Is it I, I used to look for these a long time ago. And I think I ended up just kind of saying, eh. They're not the little, little dye tips, little dye breaks. Let me see here. It's cool. It was Tyler gave me this. Oh, nice. That's cool. So, real quick, I want to ask everybody who who's actually here, six. both in chat. Give me just a second, Eric. So, everybody who's watching, I have changed my format a little bit on the StreamYard side for the vertical and the landscape. Do you guys like the format that's there? Now, I know that some of the people left from the portrait side to come over. Some people are kind of bouncing back and forth. Do you guys like this format? Do you guys like the way that I do the panels? It's it's a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit cleaner, clearer. Um, I've got the items down below me that show who's done what, the subscription count. Do you guys like this structure? Do you guys like this setup? Does it benefit you guys? Or do you want me to do something different? Because I'm really trying to improve the channel for you all. And now that I have some people, I want to get you guys' feedback. There, that's something interesting. That's what's called a bar variety. 
It's actually oh. a bar error. So what we're looking at is right here? Right above the ERT in Liberty. Okay. And I think there is some of these listed on Variety Vista. There is. There's an entire, hang on, let me go pull it up. <clears throat> There are Jefferson nickel bar errors. Hang on, copy. Yes, I think Siren's the only one watching who's a subscriber on the other side. Perplexed comes in, it'll, it should jump up. There's actually more. I think that's the number of subscribers who were in. It doesn't show, that count doesn't show non-subscribers. Um, that YouTube count, it only shows the, the subscribers who were in the portrait side. Um, if you're not a subscriber, it doesn't show up in there. Um, I yeah, need to change that to where it's in the uh, the vertical side. There should be a way to do two different ones, and I need to coordinate that, but I don't know how to do that yet. This I will get there. ERP6, it is actually listed. So this is just a, a, it's just a die chip? Just, yeah. little, just die chips of, of, above the letters. and they, then There's you know. one above the six right there. They have found out that that people like them and enjoy collecting them. Um, I have opinions about it, but I won't. You know, you know like what uh, you like, collect what you like. I, I agree. Um, uh, yeah. There's people so, that collect machine doubling, and I yeah. see no use in it unless it's like something super duper. Like I've seen it where it's so bad that basically all the numbers of the date are gone. So I have a quarter I mean, that's I like that. I think that I think that part of part of the cause of these is some type of misalignment, some yeah. some some catastrophic um, damage to that to that area of the die. Um, and then he sent me that, which is RPM number two. Nice. That's a that's not an easy one to see right there, folks. Because no. did it take a little hit or something? Um, no, it's just like that. It's a little later die state than what he's got listed. Ah, so the punch. But you can see it. I don't know. You can see my. You can see it right here. Is yeah, you I can see really that. See That's the only. And thing then that down here, you can see it again. But like up here, even in his listing, it's it's like that, but not as bad. This is a little bit later die state than he's got listed. Yeah. Perplex yeah, mind, you have a great punch. Easter, bud. I hope you're doing well. Enjoy your time if you're going to be with family or the kiddos. I hope so you I have a wonderful day. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate you. I just opened those up today. Nice. So it's pretty cool. Gift from nice. Tyler. Hey, Tiger Stacker just gifted five memberships. Tiger Stacker, outstanding. Thank you so much. So those oh, went to AZ too. Coins, J Dud, Wolf Metal Stacking, West Texas Stacker. Outstanding. West Texas is having Thank a good you. day. He won the got earlier. And then we got Rockzilla. So congratulations. Please make sure you all say all right. thank you to Tiger Stacker for doing that. That's absolutely awesome. Thank you. I did get this too. I just opened in the package. Mail. Man. They're having a rough time in there. If you guys hear that, my, my little granddaughter does not want them putting drops in her eyes. Uh, being a kid and having stuff like that's got to be horrible. Nineteen nineteen S S over S North yeah. West. Uh, north. 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 Or actually, South. Oh, so there's a RPM south number there. one. I can't. South. Can you turn your light up a little bit? Can't see that very well on my. You end. know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to take it out of. Uh, I think we both saw that little damage to. North yes, perplex. I'm going to take it out. This is of, live. I didn't even see that. No, if you were on, um, that happened on the other side. Um, hold on just a second. Let me do this. There it is. Bam. Okay. So you know what I just did? So Tiger just gifted five memberships on the, uh, the other side. So I just gifted five memberships on the, side that was portrait mode it shows better this way so Ew. there you go so who got those Rosan, matt t seven stacks james schultz and michael stacking you guys just got your chat was way behind oh i got you all right so i just gifted five memberships to the other side uh to match tiger's generous donation 
So thank you, Tiger. I appreciate that, bud. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, there it is right there. Oh, and by the way, hold on just a sec. <laughs> if you guys aren't a member over at Tiger Stacker, if you're not subscribed to Tiger Stacker, go check out Tiger Stacker. Him and I are going to be doing a really cool project on a highly, highly, highly collectible silver bar. It's a great story, a lot of mystery, a lot of stuff. Go check, go check him out. You're going to have to see that. We'll be seeing that here in a little while. Cool, cool stuff. All right. Sorry about that, Eric. So what do we got? No, I, uh, 1919 RPM number one. I bought it off of Facebook. It's like the first coin I bought off of Facebook. Okay. So now I can see that down at the bottom a little bit better. Before it looked like it was up over at the top. Yeah. It depends on how the lighting is. Yeah. That's nice. This needs to go in, in the seventh edition, volume one of the cherry pickers guide. Just I'm putting my load in right now. There are so many varieties that need to go in there. Yeah. I hope that they, I hope that they do a better job. Frosty, how do I turn that on? Um, perplexed. I, <laughs> I, I need a little bit more clarification, uh, to that. Um, you know what? Tiger Stackers thing didn't show up. I need to figure out how that works too. Okay. I got to figure that out. Um, how do I turn what on? How do I turn on that gift thing? Um, are you talking about how to get, get memberships or do you want to turn on gifting? Do you want to become a member? I'm, I need a little bit of clarification on what you're trying to ask. Because there's, there's something that you need to do. So if you go to the membership, um, like if you go click on up at the top, you'll see the gift, gift membership. If you click on that, it should uh, say something like enable gifting, and then you have to opt into that. Yeah, so you should be able to click on that little gift thing, and then there should be a little three-dot button that should say something like allow gift memberships or something. If it's turned on, then you won't see it. But if you, um, if you want one, oh, how do I, oh, I don't know if I can direct. I don't know if I can send a gift directly to a person. Can you, can you give I don't somebody? Think so. I don't think I can give somebody specifically. Mm -hmm. It's pretty random. Um, I'll have to check perplex mine. I think it's pretty much it's pulled by. I think it's pulled randomly. So I don't think. How does it get a gift? Yeah, you don't. You don't get a signed it one. It just randomly. comes random. Yeah. I do think, though, that if you're not a member and you buy memberships, it gives you one first. Because uh, somehow I get a yeah, membership that. all the time. You know, I don't know. Um no, I don't want to gift. Oh, you you want to become a member? Well, if you want to become a member, down in the very bottom, you should see a little square that looks like a dollar sign. If you click on the little square with the dollar sign, it'll come up. Now, if you're on your phone and you're on an Apple device, you may not see it because sometimes they disable that. Um, but if you do, you'd be able to go in and just click on that and you'd be able to click on one. Okay. He's like, no, no, no. I'm, I know it's random. Not a big deal. Uh, just email me perplexed. We'll figure out what you're asking for and we'll get there. Yeah. If you want to gift one, it's going to be that little dollar thing down in the corner. I'm, I've got to see what it's like if you're on your phone. Cause sometimes like when I'm on my phone, I can't gift a membership because it removes it. It's, I think it's an Apple thing. Um, so if I'm going to do that, I can't use the app. I actually have to go through Safari or whatever and then do it through there. Or I just go utilize the computer. And if I'm going to be streaming, then I'm going to be on the computer. Oh, no, you're not keeping me from my show. I'm it, So here's the thing about questions. The only dumb question is the one not asked. And odds are, if you ask a question, there are other people in chat that have the exact same one. So never, ever, 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 anybody ever feel bad about asking me a question. Okay. Just All that's, right. that's not a problem. Go anxious ahead, Eric, go ahead and show it. How, anxious doesn't see how this is an RPM. Here is the, another S right here. Yep. South. And then it comes up and then you can see the upper loop come right here. 
So that's the RPM right there. Repunched mint mark. It is, yeah, a repunched mint mark. So when they were have the little punch, uh, everybody's hopefully familiar with what a little letter punch looks like. Um, it's a little bar of steel with a like a like a typewriter end on the end of it. Yeah, like one of those leather, like the leather punches or something yeah. that you can buy. The metal punches. In, uh, when they stamped it, they they obviously either put this in first and didn't like where it was at, or you know, there could be a million. It could just be chatter where he hit it and then it bounced up and bounced back into the die. Um, but there's a lot of reasons why it happens. Uh, but it happens. Mm -hmm. And the reason that it's significant is they're all put in by hand. Well, let's see. I can turn it up. Let's see if I can get the lighting better on it. Let me move it. There you go. So Coin Crew actually is streaming right now. Polly Mailers. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here in just a second because okay. I didn't I didn't realize that they were streaming. No, they didn't sorry. have one scheduled there. That might show it a little bit better. Yeah. So you see the S right there. It's actually a pretty significant. All right, everybody, have a blessed day. Happy Easter. Um, have a great day and have a good week next week. Bye, Frostbite. Bye, Eric. Thanks for coming up. Later. Happy Easter. There, how's that? That better for you guys? Oh, yeah, that looks much, much better. Yeah, that's that's much cleaner. You can see that much clearer on the uh, the YouTube side. So you can see underneath there. So right here, if you can see my mouse. Uh, you can see that right there. Yeah, they changed their mind. We'll wrap up here in just a few minutes. Um, yeah. Do this. Here, let me do this. Um, there you go, Perplex. Just send me an email, and then I'll respond to it. We'll make sure that things are taken care of. Um, but, yeah, that's a. you can see his hand. Can you see that little itty-bitty hand there? And Eric can show you where that's at. You can see it kind of in that lower lower first turn on the upper portion yeah, of the Yeah, you see the well. little thing right right here too. Yep. Yep. It's actually a really nice one. So perplexed, I, your, your keyboard sucks while well, my fingers suck. I can't type, so don't feel bad. That's that's my problem. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. we're wrapping this up. I want to tell everybody to have a great holiday and uh we'll see y'all soon. All right, we'll see you later. Appreciate you being here, Eric. Thank you so much for being here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. If I can have my moderators do me a favor, throw uh, Coin Crew's uh, uh, link down below. As a matter of fact, I have it up here, so let me do this. Um, let's throw that here, and we'll throw that here. If you want to go check out Coin Crew, they got something going on right now. We'll go ahead and pop up over there. Please do me a favor. Okay, if you're watching this and you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. I really only need three to get to 1700. I'd like to do that by the end of the day. But you're going to be seeing information from me, and that's Frosty's 2K by the 1st of May. I'm really going to be working hard to getting to that 2K mark here in the next 30 days. So again, you're going to be seeing some live pop-ups from me, information that's coming out. I've got some really cool videos that are going to be coming out. So please make sure you stay tuned to some of those things. I also want feedback on the structure, on the general setup. I want to talk about, do you guys like the multi-stream? Do you like this format? Do you like this layout? Do you like the vertical format? Does it work for you? I want to make sure that you're seeing what you want to see. I want to make sure that you have a good picture, a good image. And when I'm doing it by myself, this is a nice, clean, clear picture. It's nice, bright, and big. I may end up doing stuff like this more frequently um, during the week to make sure that, you know, we get people engaged and whatnot. But please do me a favor. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. 
And I will see you guys here in just a few minutes over at Coin Crew. Be well, be blessed. And ladies and gentlemen, I will see you.